find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pain for the taste of the blood. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show number 30. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Production up here in Pittsburgh with Sorgatron Media. And with me, my compatriot in the wrestling world, Eamon Payton. At Eamon 2, please. He's a commentator down there for Inspire Pro Wrestling. Ready to talk some indie wrestling with us today. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. We're at 30, so we're, we're, we're past our, our, our 20s and we're into official, yes, yes. official adulthood. So. As, a, as a good friend Chachi would say, this is the part where he starts uh, smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. Exclusively. Well, well, I can do that now. So that, there that's you go. Great. You're allowed to do really that, fun. too. That's that's good. That's good. Um, and we'll get to our guests in a moment. But in the meantime, uh, a big thanks to Basic Sickness, uh, basicsickness.com for free music. If you dig that, check out much more and music videos, all kinds of fun stuff on there. Also, you can drop us uh, or drop by WrestlingMayhemShow.com to check out this and other shows, including the main Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, where we talk about the big two or three-ish, uh, as well as our after shows, our wrap-ups, all kinds of stuff and great articles. Um, uh, it's signaling all about John Cena lately, which is really weird. Uh, you can also check out this show uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, video and audio formats. And you can drop us a line to goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412 206 WMS0. Catch us on uh, Twitter at Mayhem Show, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, and Facebook group. And please leave some comments and uh, join us here live every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. So, Eamon, who do we have on the line this week? We have a very special guest this week in the fact that he is our first ever repeat guest this week. Uh, we had, It's been a while since we actually talked to him on the show. It's, I believe it was last time we had him on was back in March. And, and since then, a lot has happened. Uh, and uh, definitely stuff we want to discuss with you on the show. He's one of my bosses. Uh, please welcome back to the Indie Mayhem Show, uh, one of the co-owners of Inspire Pro Wrestling, Biss. Biss, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm kicking back, relaxing in my brand new Miss the Celestia t-shirt. Yes, which you can, I believe, get at smartslikeus.com. Uh, awesome. Plug out for, uh, for uh, or, Alexia. Or buy it from her at a show. Yeah. True. Sorg, you saw Sorg saw her this past. Yes, I did. I actually waited us. until after her match before I cut out for the night because I was really, really tired and cold. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> but I made sure I got Miss Dyslexia in as well. She was well re- well received by the Juggalos. This was a week ago, and you were cold. I was about to move. <laughs> Oh, dude! It was no. This was uh, well, this was uh, Thursday night slash Friday morning at like two and two or three in the morning, and it, we're getting some kind of weird polar vortex, and it's down in like the low fifties. And all I had was shorts and t-shirts, and it was it was really ugly. So, and we'll definitely get. In. Oh, go ahead. One hundred and four the last week, so that sounds. Just oh, other yes. than, other than that, it was great for the rest of the weekend for a four day outdoor. People were camping in this stuff uh, uh, festival. Uh, so, but we'll get into the gathering here in the second half. <laughs> yes, indeed, because uh, we definitely want to talk about Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened since uh, we've last had this on the show. The biggest thing that I want to touch on with this is we made it to a year, uh, which is kind of crazy, and not, uh, not a lot of promotions can say that. Uh, uh, what do you feel coming out of, you know, being able to do this for one full year now? Man, it, I will. I drove this show with Max, who, um, people that don't follow Inspire Pro closely, like me and Max are, are pretty tight. And as far as creative goes, um, you know, we spent a lot of time arguing and trying <laughs> to figure stuff out. So, um, you know, it was cool driving to the show and just being like, man, we've officially made it in the year two. Um, last show was, was the big celebration, our one year celebration, but this show was really like, well, all right, we, we made it past that, so kind of look around and go, what do we do now? Like, it feels like just yesterday, like, I was sitting in the airport waiting to pick up, um, Chuck Taylor, and that's when it really hit me that it was even gonna, like, start and be a real thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of going day by day, and, um, 
Yeah, it's crazy. It's amazing how much it's grown. So definitely, I, I actually recently watched back some of the stuff from the first show and to to see the evolution of you know about hundred or so people in the building that night. You know, uh, very sort of testing the waters, obviously in in you know production and, and just the feel of the show, and then looking at you know this past Sunday, like like it's amazing how things have have changed and grown exponentially. I think. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think. Like I, re- I remember being so excited that more than ten people showed up to so like <laughs> those first hundred people, right? But now, you know, if we did a hundred people, I'd be, I'd be pretty disappointed. So mm-hmm. it's crazy how just how quick that's happened. Definitely, and we've had a lot of good stuff uh, along the way. Another, I would say, the one of the biggest things, and we've discussed it many times here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, that has happened to inspire pro wrestling uh, in the time since we've last had you was our new affiliation with the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, I know you, you are very close uh, with the guys in the National Wrestling Alliance for many years, uh, and I personally know how much this this affiliation meant to you. Uh, what, was, what was it like that night to, to you know, finally make the announcement that we joined the, uh, the National Wrestling Alliance? That was awesome. It was... Um... It was really special for a, for a ton of different reasons. Um, negotiations for that uh, drug on, and it's, it's really weird because Tony Brooklyn, who's the CEO of uh, mm-hmm. the National Wrestling Alliance right now, um, me and him are really good friends. So it's really weird to have to like talk out terms with with like somebody who's your good friend, but like you have to get everything hashed out and make sure everything's good, and that was. That was really difficult to, to talk to somebody that you're a good friend, but at the same time, you have to look out for the best interest of your company and the people that work for you and make sure it's it's the right thing. Um, so for that to like finally come together and him to be like in the ring, I was there the first wrestling show he worked on in Houston. So yeah. like to come full circle like that. Um, and I, I had a tear to my eyes uh, when we made the announcement. The other big thing for me was um, especially nowadays, no one makes a big deal about announcing that they're joining. So mm-hmm. for us to be able to to make that announcement and the fans to be very happy for us, like the fans to react positively and, and be happy, like that it was, was the achievement it was and for them to recognize the achievement that it was, um, was really cool. And then to have uh, Tony kind of bust my balls afterwards and be like, oh, you shed a couple of tears in there. It was a, uh, it was pretty funny because I, I think over the whole negotiation scores a few tear sheds. So. Yeah, definitely. And I agree with you completely. I have, I've watched back the announcement on uh, on uh, In Their Blood, um, through, which you can view through Smartmark now, uh, a couple times. And, and it's, like I said, the reaction that we got from that was really kind of spectacular. And I think it was, a, uh, I mean, especially in Texas where I think a lot of it is, uh, I would say is the home base of the National Wrestling Alliance right now, but the you know the fact that I think people are starting to recognize that hey, this is a worldwide association. You know, this is this is huge. You know, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, I will I'll be completely honest. I I worked for an NWA affiliate in Houston before Tony and Bruce um, and the team they have in place now took over, mm-hmm. and. Um, I was trying to convince Tony to pull out, you know, like, um, I was not happy with the direction and I didn't see it going anywhere. And to go from like that despair to, you know, them getting the brand, um, and then the work they put in to to turn the brand around has been really, um, really uplifting. And now it's really cool that we get to be a part of it. And the weird part about that was just, um, the family atmosphere, like, like that night, even um, promoters from across the street stayed kind of came to, to welcome us in, and then um, just whenever we show up at other shows, just to be like welcomed with open arms is is more than I expected. And it was an additional benefit that I could have never really um, thought about when we were, were going through that. Definitely. And then I think one of the things that stuck out uh, during the announcement when Tony, uh, Tony Brooklyn was speaking was he, he really, I think, tried to home in on the idea that, you know, the NWA is all about remembering and, and, and embracing history, but also paving the way for the future. And, 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 and I think 
it, it really sort of showcased that, you know, the NWA is based in tradition, but it's, you know, it's not the, what you would think of when you think of the NWA. And, and I, I like to think that was sort of one of the goals that came with, you know, this, this new affiliation. Definitely. Um, what's really cool about Tony is a lot of people before have gotten held up on just honoring tradition and honoring the, the past with the NWA. Um, Tony is very forward thinking. Bruce Thorpe is very forward thinking. Um, and that was something big for us because what we do, I like to at least think is very forward thinking. So when I, maybe when I told Tony something along the lines of, Hey, I don't think we're your stereotypical NW promotion. Um, I'm not sure how we fit in. His response was, we already have the, the stereotypical NWA promotion. We want new markets. We want new ideas and a new vision. Um, mm-hmm. And that was really cool. And they have done nothing but support us in any progressive things that we've wanted to do so far. So he's lived up to his end of the bargain, which is really cool because that's what it's going to take for, for the brand to grow and become something more. Definitely. And you mentioned working uh, and, you know, getting the support from various NWA promoters uh, that were in attendance that night. And I, I know not too long ago after the, uh, the affiliation, we uh, got the pleasure of working with the guys at NWA 360, for example, uh, hosting a title match there. And I, we've talked about, I discussed it on the show a couple, a uh, couple months ago was, is the idea that it's cool to see that form of camaraderie and and the ability to work together that I think is sometimes very rare on the independent wrestling scene and, and I mean probably on the wrestling scene in general. Um, but uh, do you get that? Do you get the same feeling from that? Uh, getting to work with uh, different people from within the NWA. Yeah, it's it's um it makes that easier because you know that you're kind of working towards a common goal. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously everyone has their own promotion and everyone has their own little territory that they you know, are drawing fans from. Um, but at the end of the day, if the NWA name's, name is stronger and the NWA champions are stronger, then your progression gets stronger. So it, it makes it easier to work with those guys. And then, you know, I, I was a fan of the Aston Peeler. That's what I think. So, you know, hats off to Aaron Presley and the 360 guys for putting up with me. Um, but yeah, like, they were a pleasure. And then those guys drew like 800 people. Mm-hmm. Um, which is crazy for, uh, you know, that town. And, and I'm sure it's just going to keep on growing. And, and I may be even be underestimating what they drew. They, they did a fantastic job um, getting out and, and drawing people. Um, you know, just completely hats off to them. I was blown away by the professionalism of that show. Definitely awesome. Uh, so let's go into a bit of, since uh, Inspire Pro did happen last Sunday, uh, our no turning back event. A lot of things that I think are, are uh, sort of revolve around you in a sense. I do want to touch on. I think one of the biggest things of the night uh, that a lot of people were talking about was uh, the final farewell for uh, for Rachel Summerlin. And I obviously know, uh, and a lot of people I think know, uh, you know, your relationship with Rachel and and, and your sort of uh, friendship that you you've gained over the years. Uh, what was it like, uh, sort of watching that moment uh, play out? It, it, oh man, it was, um, you know, I, I had some tears in my eyes, you know, mm-hmm. um, it was very, very emotional because like selfishly, you don't want that to be the end of Rachel Summerlin, but at the same time on a personal level, I know that that's what's best for Rachel, you know, mm-hmm. so like, there's this weird, there's this weird inner battle there. And then it's just, it's nice to see her be able to to say goodbye, to, you know, on her own terms, without the neck injury, without, you know, the, the chaos that, that was, you know, when we all left. Um, and just be able to kind of be at peace at it and, and see somebody, you know, you see enough, like, like horrible stories of people dragging on well past when they should. Mm-hmm. It's it really should be celebrated when somebody gets out on their own terms. Um, Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, but that, the, that wasn't the only thing you were sort of, uh, uh revolved in, uh, that evening. Uh, I know that, 
following uh, Sammy Guevara's uh, successful defense of the J crown over Eric Shadows, you kind of made your feelings known to Sammy about some of his uh, <laughs> his recent actions, and 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 what followed was kind of an interesting scene, uh, uh, to say the least. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of days have passed since the incident. Do you have any uh, anything uh, coming off of it? I have, a, yeah, I have bruises all over. Um, yeah, so yeah, I um, I see a lot of ACH in Sammy Guevara, and ACH is somebody that I was very close to. Um, and ACH has this this strange passion about him. Um, it's it's like an undying, unwielding passion, and it's really what makes him so great. Um, it, it can be intense, and it can be too much for some people until they, they get to know him. Um, Sammy has a very similar type of charisma that, that's not, you know, that runs people the wrong way. And, and the message there was, was basically, what I was attempting to do was, was to make sure that he identified with that. Um, I turned my back and uh, I got pummeled down. Um, I, uh, I have a bruised shoulder. I have a bruised jaw. Um, I wasn't sure how I got the bruised shoulder, but apparently Sammy Guevara jumped my height and uh, kneed me in the jaw and also um, hit me with his, uh, I guess his, um, his like, chin caught me in the shoulder and I am five foot nine, five foot nine and a half. So he was at least six feet off the ground to, to hit me in the shoulder. Um, yeah. I also at one point somehow busted my knuckle open, although I'm fairly sure I never landed a punch. Um, but I came pretty close to getting that single leg. Um, yeah, you, definitely. So, you were very close. You were very close in that attempt. <laughs> So, I at least feel like I was. Um, but I did not fare too well against Sammy Guevara. Um, I, uh, I am not a, a, a horrible athlete, but um, I'm 30 years old and my body has seen better days. And Sammy Guevara is a 21-year-old that is in peak physical condition. So, yeah, it didn't fare too well for me to uh, poke the bear and him not get the message and kind of uh, freak out and beat me down like that. Definitely not. I, I, w- I would hope that uh, there would be some repercussions uh, uh, down in the in the future for uh, Sammy Guevara's actions uh, following that incident. You know, I am a weird cat, David. I'm, I'm sure you <laughs> figure that out by working for me. Oh, absolutely. Um, I have wrecked my brain over the past three days about what to do with Sammy Guevara. Um, I don't think I want to fight Sammy Guevara again because that didn't go too well the first time. But uh, I have a very extensive Rolodex over my years of professional wrestling, and there's some very interesting names in there um, that Sammy Guevara may get to know here fairly soon. So I will just leave it at that. Interesting. Uh, definitely, definitely an interesting place to leave it, in, and I'll have to see how that goes. Um, so going back to uh, the um, our development in Spire Pro Wrestling since the last time we talked to you, um, yeah, I mean you mentioned the NWA affiliates. You mentioned you know a lot of the stuff that's been happening. Um, what would you say maybe is the either the most well one the most fulfilling thing uh, that you uh, sort of gained through this time, and also in turn, what do you think is the biggest thing you may have learned uh, throughout this time? Oh, man, learning, the uh, most important thing I learned was that I don't know half of what I thought I did. Um, there's, there's so much that there's, like, if you ever stop learning, you might as well just stop because it's passed you by. Like, there's so much to learn. Um, and there's so many little mistakes you can make. Um, but, yeah, it's, I, I've learned that there's there's a lot in, in pro wrestling Left for me, you know. When I when I started this, it was kind of like a last hurrah, and it's it's really reinvigorated me. Um, the proudest moment would be the Porsche Perez versus Barbie Hayden in the Bay World Women's Title Match. Mm. Um, I, I was able to work with Barbie basically from very close to her debut 
uh, was in her first year or her second year um, towards her, her NWA women's uh, title matches to begin with. And then I, I kind of left the end of it before she uh, she won the belt. But um, I was able to work with her quite a bit. And then to have her defend that title against Portia Perez, who is somebody that I've also learned a lot from and somebody that I have uh, I really respect, to be able to put that match on in Austin, Texas, was, was very special to me. Definitely. And, and I, I've noted that, that match, that I would think has a special place in my heart. I, I noted it. It's, so the first match where I really sort of felt like a commentator. So I think it was I think it was a big match for the entire scope of, of what um, Inspire Pro is planning to do, especially with you know women's wrestling uh, uh, and what we're hopefully going to do going forward. Uh, speaking of, of going forward, uh, I guess uh, the last question I can ask is: Do you have any big goals coming up for the future of Inspire Pro? Is there anything you do want to do uh, and do want to uh, achieve maybe in the next year or so or Anything in particular? Well, I would like for the entire independent world to talk about our August 5th, sh- or our, our October 5th show, mm. um, which I'm not ready to announce anything. No, but, but, but I am I am ready for everyone to have Inspire Pro on their lips for that show. And if what we have in the plans comes together, which it looks like things are, are looking up for that to happen, I really, I really want our name on on everyone's lips, and I want that to be a show people go out of their way to to, to watch. You know, hopefully, you know, paying money to spare my video to watch. Definitely. Which is overall something that people want to see and, and want to see on that show. Uh, that's goal number one. Uh, goal number two is just to continue uh, growing. The, uh, the relationship with the NWA and, and start bringing in some of those champions. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, both both of those goals, I, I will say, I am very excited about. And, and like I said, we won't can't reveal too much, but uh, I, I definitely wholeheartedly agree. Um, so, yeah, uh, if there's any place that people want to follow you, uh, 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 learn more about you, learn more about Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, where can they find uh, that all on the internet? Uh, this says is the Twitter, and I think I'm using that more. Um, yes, you are. Media, I, I, I do. I, social media guy make it on me about that, but I, I think <laughs> I'm tweeting more. I, I do appreciate that. I, I, I like I like checking in every once in a while. And then, um, yeah, I'm on Facebook. Um, I post weird stuff on Facebook. Um, my grandfather follows me on Facebook, so it's kind of weird because he'll <laughs> I'll go over and visit and forget about something I posted two weeks ago. And he'll ask me what the hell it means. So, yeah. So apparently, I'm, apparently I'm hard to follow on uh, on Facebook. But yeah, I'm, I'm on there, and that's about it, man. Um, yeah, no askme.com or any of that stuff. <laughs> so, that's what yeah. these podcasts are for, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, that kind of fills the role. So, you know. Um, but yeah, and, and definitely go check out uh, inspireprowrestling.com. Uh, Twitter and Facebook, uh, Twitter Inspire Pro Res, Facebook Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, yeah, and, and keep following us because because we love what we love when you do. Uh, so thank you, Biss, for joining us, and I believe me and Sorg are going to dive into some independent wrestling. Awesome, you guys have a great night. Thanks, Eamon. And like I said, I was uh, at the gathering of the Juggalos this uh, past weekend. I haven't been there since 2006. Uh, when they were no again around the same area actually uh and, and one of the things that i always loved to go into the gathering uh ever since back in 2000 was the jcw it was really as i've said on the show before probably um my first taste of indie wrestling uh mm. back there in toledo at the seagate center uh so it was cool to kind of catch what they had going on here of course you know their wrestling starts at 1 a.m 12 30 a.m uh every night four nights uh, and, uh, it started night one with Kaiju big battle. And, uh, we did this for, uh, another kind of retrospective thing we we're doing on a podcast. I do, I call good morning. You can go look it up, look for my, this mug and Sorgatron media. 
um, that pretty face. this guy on iTunes. You can check out any more if you want to know more about my thoughts on the gathering or just other random thoughts that I have. I do like a 10 minute thing like four days a week. Uh, so you can go check that out. But in the meantime, here's a little clip of me and a, a good friend of ours, Katie, uh, at K Dutters on the Twitters, who is this is her first gathering. And I don't think she's she hasn't seen anything, I think, on this level wrestling wise. And of course, she got to see Kaiju Big Battle. So here's a quick clip, a little bit of video clips that I captured from that for you guys on video. Uh, and we'll get back into more of what's going on with the gathering right back with this. We went and saw Kaiju Big Battle. Oh, that was amazing. I've seen a match of them. I've never seen a full show other than on DVD. Uh-huh. Um, and, and you didn't know much going into it. No, no. For instance. No. And it's basically people in foam monster outfits, wrestling, with the guy announcing everything, the entire thing, the poor guy that talks for two hours straight yeah. in the cold last night. He looked like Russell Brand. This is Russell Brand? He looked like Russell Brand, and the other guy working with him looked like Lenny Kravitz with short hair. Mm-hmm. And it, and when we say monsters, it's not, oh, this guy's dressed up as Godzilla, this guy's dressed up as Mothra. They are totally created characters mm-hmm. with their own goofy name, Dusto Bunny. Dusto Bunny. Which smelled wonderfully like baby powder. Yes. And I can't imagine how much they used. Oh, they must have bought, they must have got like the giant, giant tub from Costco. <laughs> Several of them or something. Um, yeah, and then of course, I like that they, you know, being a juggalo crowd, they created a weed character. Oh, yeah. Of, and, they know their audience. Uh, and and, and a, uh, a mushroom character mm-hmm. to go along with him. Uh, as, as you'll often see here. Like I said, just a real quick kind of impressions the next morning uh, from me and somebody else uh, uh, just to lead us off here. Um, yeah, dude, Kaiju Big Bell. Of course, the Russ, we, she mentioned that uh, uh, some the one guy looked at Russell Brand, of course, you know, as loud and noxious or Galvin loudspeaker, uh, depending whichever, on where he's whichever at. Whichever you prefer. What's it? Yeah, whichever you prefer to call him. Uh, Russell Brand is apparently a, a thing to call him now. Uh, but no, it was a blast. I, 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 I'll be happy when they start calling him Adam Rose. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, (laughs) But no, it was, you know, kind of light the first night because it was just like uh, they had the stage set up with the uh, the roof and the and the ramp and everything, just like kind Mm -hmm. of in a field. Right. It always kind of has been. Um, So, you know, you're coming down a hill and there's this setup and it's nighttime. Right. Like we got there in the dark. So we don't even know what this campground looks like. For those who don't know, Gathering of the Juggalos, it is a four day music festival. And camping on the grounds, very kind of hippie festish as far as that part goes. Uh, fans of Insane Clown Posse, Juggalos, if you will. Um, and they have their concerts in the evening. They have other things during the day, other kind of variety kind of stuff. Uh, uh, wet t-shirt contests, uh, uh, gating games, uh, seminars, you know, uh, stuff of that nature. Autograph tents. Then they have the concerts in the evening. And then they have rest- overnight, they have the wrestling. They have more concerts on like two stages until about 4 a.m. Uh, it's, mm. it's a fantastic time. There's always something going on. And you have to choose, like, this is the night I'm going to go to bed early. And I'll get to that in a moment. But Kaiju Big Battle is, like, the perfect thing. I think it's the first time it's been to the gathering that I that I know. But I know in the past they've had something called flashlight wrestling, where all the fans bring flashlights, and that's how they like the wrestling. This is apparently oh, wow. on a couple DVDs. I want to go check this out, right? <laughs> they've really done a lot with this since when I used to. And plus, they used to do it during the daytime, right? Which it was just super hot and really disgusting, right? Um, right. But Kaiju was amazing. They had the waffle wrestling. They had Dusto Bunny. Dusto Bunny was one that we we were really interested in. Um, I'm fairly certain uh, uh, in his Bill Cosby sweater, uh, uh, Doctor Cube is certainly certainly DJ Lunchbox from our uh, you know our Wrestling Mayhem show. Our oh God, he is. There. Isn't he oh, though? Jesus, he is. Um, oh I, man, I, I snagged a lot of pictures, a lot of like kind of clips and stuff as we were going here. A little bit of Instagrams. Uh, the the I don't know why my videos won't play on this, but you can check them out uh, Instagram.com slash Sorgatron. Well, here's a pic uh, of uh, uh, the gambling bug against uh, Waffle, the French to- or the 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 Waffle named French Toast. Um, <laughs> Of course, and I've seen the sandwich Man. character in the past on like DVDs and videos and stuff. Uh, Dusto Bunny, great pose uh, there if you're on video with Dusto Bunny. Uh, they, now you notice, you notice on the bottom if you're looking at the pictures, the um, um, uh, the buildings, right? Because this is this mm. is Kaiju Big Battle. The Kaiju is like the monsters, the Japanese monsters, right? And the idea is the wrestling is these monsters fighting, and there's heroes and everything like that, very like Ultraman-ish kind of heroes, and all stuff. As as Thunder said there in the video, just created 
original characters, right? Um, right. And you know, and he's he is announcing the entire time, and they went for like three hours. And the guy, even when they had like a weird intermissiony kind of thing, he's still talking and saying, "Here, please buy our T-shirts and stuff," and and, and that kind of stuff. At one point, they actually, uh, and I might have Instagrammed this as well. It's at least in my my YouTube's over at youtube.com slash SBS Juggalo. Uh, I have some other clips. Uh, actually, it's on my Instagram as well. Uh, the Juggalos lined up and they started hitting them in the heads with the like they requested to be hit in the head with the buildings. So uh, it was it was kind of fun. You know, it just fits right in with that that kind of crowd. Right. Uh, the second night was the erotic ladies of wrestling. Hmm. Now. I was worried. I think I expressed this to you last week, Eamon. I was worried that this was just going to be some glorified strippers kind of sort of wrestling and doing other naughty things in a ring. Yes, which would not be fun. <laughs> no, I, like, I, I wouldn't stuck around for that, you know. Uh, so much. I mean, just walking around the grounds, you see enough boobs, right? Mm. Or you just never see enough boobs. Depends on who you are. Um, I see me. Adequate amount. <laughs> yeah, I seen an adequate amount. Uh, but uh, there was, I mean, first thing was, you know, Cherry Bomb came out and interrupted. Uh, uh, actually, I have her name right here because she's the one that teams with Madman Pondo and it's, uh, makes. Oh, uh, Crazy stuff. Mary Dobson. Thank you, Crazy Mary Dobson. Uh, pull that up there. There it is. I got the names. Uh, and there they set up for a main event later that night, uh, which I did not get to see. Uh, Miss Dyslexia took on Nevia, who I'm familiar with Nevia from IWC, actually. Um, a couple other girls were involved. Uh, with some pretty decent matches. Uh, I got about three. Seemed like some really good. Seemed like some really good names. Actually, it is. It is. Like it seemed like a who's who of what you see up in AIW or any other good women's show uh, around the Midwest, at least. Um, mm-hmm. You know, great. You know, I have no idea what they did past that because about three a.m. Of course, we we didn't really sleep too well um, because of our situation <laughs> there. Well, we 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 went actually went up. We weren't originally going to go the first night. Um, and mm. then we found out like Big Foley was there the first night and Tech Nine and 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 the like, Skyjoo Big Bow. So I was like, okay, let's go. We didn't book a hotel. We'll just sleep in the car until like two when we can go to the room or whatever, right? Uh, yeah. So it, plus it was like very weirdly unseasonably cold. Like I said, dropped in the fifties, and we're like, we have shorts. You know? <laughs> so uh, it, you know, between all that together, we're just like, let's go ahead and cut out. Uh, but stuck around for most of the wrestling the next few nights. They, they rode to Bloody Mania the night after. Uh, you have not seen. You need to find clips of this. You need to find clips on this. And we don't uh, usually get real big into swearing on this show, but this this kind of goes with it. Officer Cole Cabana, sir. Yes, I, I have heard the heard about most Cole amazing Cabana. thing I've ever seen. Of course, Juggalos they hate cops, right? So here's Cole Cabana comes out as a police officer, for, and he claims he's from the Licking County, which was the local county we were in, pl- Sheriff's Department, which actually mm-hmm. the Sheriff's Department, there was actually uh, one of the few times where they had to have the cops on the premises as part of the deal. Um, right. So he came, he comes out and he's got a long flashlight, club flashlight, and he says, you know, um, I'm going to arrest all of your asses and start ass fucking you in jail. Hmm. Yes. And yeah. it, it was fantastic. Uh, and typically, the, they've had they've had problems in the past of uh, of people throwing stuff and pretty much ruin, ruining shoots for them that they tried to shoot yeah. for DVD, especially at the gathering. So everybody is very self produced p- policing these days of don't throw shit at the, whoever throws something at somebody in the ring, right? That's so dangerous. Right. It is dangerous for wrestlers and everything. Um, mm-hmm. he just like somebody, threw, he's the only one that I think nobody really kind of polices because they're like, yeah, throw shit at this guy because he's, he's a cop. Fuck him. You know, um, I think these are not generally like wrestling fans who know who Cole Cabana is sometimes, but they're okay. more, in, they're more interested in the character he's portraying at that moment. They, they get immersed in, in the, oh, in they the are character. immersed. Holy crap. They're immersed. Um, the chants were, were amazing. Oh, after one of the girls lost, uh, there was a chant of at least you tried. <laughs> uh, calls of uh, punch her in the pussy um, <laughs> or do other things to the pussy uh, <laughs> of course sorry, sorry I want you to say pussy one more time <laughs> pussy it's okay. late at night this is a late night show it counts right yeah. hey, I'm reporting okay 
Remind me to put. Re- remind me. I have to put dark. an explicit tag on this, and I have to put an explicit tag on Boss Battle because Evan Jalisco was on that, and he did not give a shit. <laughs> I friend any of the memes of Evan Jalisco. He was. Ha- he was very happy. He was very happy to be on Boss Battle talking about video games. So please check that out. It's going to begin dot com as well. Um, Zach Gowan, of course, uh, wrestling there. Necro Butcher. Uh, Necro Butcher doesn't bleed much anymore, does he? I don't. The, I. I hope not natural. I mean, I would think that the years of yeah, 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 you know, blading um, and stuff like that would kind of cause it to happen naturally. But. Actually, um, uh, Foley uh, did a little bit of a shout out to Necro Butcher and and said, "Hey, he's a smart guy." You know, uh, he had huh. a lot of, he had a couple good things to say about Necro Butcher during his set, during his comedy set uh, the night nice. the first night. So um, they they had a cage match. Uh, we actually saw Congo Kong. Yes, I have heard of Congo Oh, Kong. I just got to see him wrestle twice, and it is pretty fantastic. A large black guy. He's doing, like, backflips. It's crazy. Like, standing standing <laughs> moonsault kind of stuff, sort of. He does kind of a rollover thing. Um, he actually did a squash match with Pepper Parks and Colin Delaney the first night. Oh, Jesus. Which was a weird mix to set up for a cage match, which was the first match of Bloody Mania 8 the final night. Because um, that's the way you kick it off. <laughs> yes. Also, an eight-man tag, uh, like we talked about before. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs, who is the emo warrior that just wants to read his poetry that never gets to <laughs> Barry Wellington, the haters, <laughs> we just do guys in like these like weird masks and they just hate jugglers. Uh against Zach Gowan, Shockwave the robot, and these are you know these are the homegrown guys for J- for the Juggalos, uh, Weed Man and Isaiah. Ah, okay. Yes, uh, Zach. Uh, at one point, Shockwave, who does the robot to the ring, it's fantastic. A wrestling robot. This is the second wrestling robot I've seen in one year's time. Um, gets doused with water, I think, by Jacobs. Uh, Zach Gowan goes and does some bleep bloop bloop on his uh, arm, and he uh, uh, powers up and hulks up. That's amazing. It's fantastic. It's the best. Uh, Jeez, I don't even know what else to say about this. I saw the boogeyman <laughs> take out take on Officer Cole Cabana. He fed worms to the front row. Oh Jesus! There Christ. were juggalos eating worms in the front row. It oh was... God! <laughs> it's very uh, interactive at the gathering of the juggalos, sir. Yes, indeed. I I, 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 I may avoid the front row if I ever do go to a boogeyman match at the gathering. But um, yeah, definitely makes you wonder if like like does that happen anywhere else? Are there other no, I, like shows that are maybe just a little bit crazy because they're like ECW fans or something? Like Phoebe the Worms, or is it just <laughs> like this was a row of Juggalos that happened to be on PCP at the time uh, here at the <laughs> here at the gathering? So complex complex questions, and I know you may, not we may never know the answer. Never know the answer. We'll never find those people that ate the worms at the gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> um, but no, they did film the final night, Blood of Mania Eight, and and they had a couple. Uh, they had actually Shaggy Two Dope of the Insane Clown Posse on uh, uh, commentary, uh, and, and like I said, I had to cut out because they just took so long. And again, it was like it started so late because you know it, it's after the big show of the weekend with the Insane Clown Posse, right? So they start right. they start like one thirty two o'clock, starting with the cage match. And then it takes forever to take the cage down. Then they take their damn time between every single match. You can kind of tell Kevin Gill, who um, I, originally I know of being involved with the Backyard Wrestling video game, mm-hmm. of which ICP was also involved with. Uh, he's on commentary, and I think he more or less kind of runs JCW for the way he was running around and kind of yelling at people. Um, so <laughs> nothing ever goes right. Also saw a bloody battle royal, which we talked about with Matt Tremont. I don't think he was there. I don't know if I was just too late. I was too tired. I missed it. Missed the name. Didn't recognize him. Who knows? Uh, but it was a lot of really interesting people. Even uh, a girl was in there actually. Jeez, um, uh, 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 Ron Mathis that we saw at DBI. Oh, I talked okay. about yeah, how that yeah, great yeah. match with Ricky Shane Page was there. So I apparently I'm seeing him in the kind of match he typically does in this. <laughs> awesome. There's probably about ten guys that were in there, and again, it's you had to get bloody. Before you were eliminated over the top rope, because that—I uh, mean, come on, it's, it's the name of the show, Bloody so Mania, and this is where the name comes from. I'm sure there was some blood involved with Tommy Dreamer versus Two Tough Tony as well. Um, like, right. like I said, I cut out. It was like about four in the morning. I was like, you know what, man, I gotta get at least a couple of these so we can get home. 
here in the morning, you know, <laughs> um, and I'm still wet and cold from all the ICP stuff. And uh, it, it was just like, yeah, we, OK, we're done with this. I saw Boogeyman feed worms to Juggalos and Cole Cabana. I'm fine. Um, so I missed out on the uh, mixed tag with Madman Pondo and Crazy Mary Dobson. Uh, I guess I've also people actually hi or Shay Mercer and Heidi Lovelace. So they were coming. Yeah. That, and the main yeah, event, so, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, like it's uh, a lot of uh, names. I mean, I would say Midwest based people, mm-hmm. but a lot mm-hmm. of names that are, you know, prominent in the, in, in the wrestling world. And oh, I think sure. that's really cool. For sure. Uh, and, and a lot of good things. And it is, it is definitely one of those things where like the people that are involved and good wrestlers, because a lot of times they were like, you know, highly, juggalo gimmicks and they just horrible horrible wrestling around it you know um, right like i was kind of worried about you know we saw the hooligans who we talked about here on the show they were in yes, a tlc indeed. match against the ring riders which are kind of like you know the kind of juggalo you know gangster characters you know there's actually mm-hmm. a group called the, the psychopathic riders and they wear the bandanas like these guys do good freaking wrestlers holy crap i don't know who they are ev- otherwise but they know <laughs> what the hell they're doing like i want to find out like who who they are so I can follow what other matches because they can't be the ring riders anywhere else but Detroit and ICP shows. Right. It doesn't make any sense anywhere else. And, and same with these guys, the haters that came out uh, for some of these. Uh, but the hooligans, uh, everything you hoped, man. And that TLC match was pretty brutal. It was a lot of fun. Um, at one point, they started yelling, fuck your beard after um, one of the hooligans uh, 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 messed up one of the riders to which you it's, you know, that moment where like they're chanting something so weird in the crowd and you can tell it got the attention of the of the guy in the ring. Oh, yeah. yeah it yeah. was just like, it's just like, really, really? My beard? Really? This is where <laughs> we're at after all this, you know, um, but it was great to see them uh, in person. So, I, you know, other than that, it's just a lot of fun, a lot of great wrestling. I'm really glad to see that JCW's really kind of come along as a promotion. You know, uh, I, I know mm-hmm. their stuff's kind of a mess right now. It feels like every time I check on JCW, it's a mess. They're like in between, like whatever runs they're doing. You know, like they did Slam right. TV for a while, then they did some tours. You know, apparently they did a few shows here leading up to the gathering, but there's nothing immediately happening. There's nothing <laughs> on their site. You know what I mean? It seems very different than what yeah. um, normal independent, like what you consider independent wrestling sort of normally. They're done. sporadic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like there was a period where they did eye pay per views uh, once a month, maybe twice a month, and they were partnered with High Spots putting out the DVDs for them. They were selling them mm. for like five bucks a piece. They had a lot of great, again, Detroit people like Rhino, you know, is on it, and Zach Allen, he's, you know, very right. Detroit based uh, kind of people, which is fine, you know. Um, and again, I, I really think like the more the more and more I hear it, uh, from from wrestlers, it's either, you know, all oh, those guys are awesome or F those guys. As far as ICP goes, ICP right. not wrestling anymore. Uh, Jay's, I don't think anywhere near ring shape. Um, I was really and I'm just speaking of this just because they were they, they're part of the wrestling. Well, I mean, in St. Cloud Posse, they did. Uh, you know, they did WWF. They wrestled in WCW. Uh, mm-hmm. They we, we talked about earlier on the Wrestling Mayhem show how ICP was a reason I watched TNA. The first time, uh, tried mm-hmm. out their eye paper, not their eye paper views, but their weekly pay per views, right? Their pay per views, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're weekly pay per views when they, that's all you could get of them. Um, you know, they're 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 a part of it, um, and and they're definitely a little older now. And 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 Jay was in decent shape for a while, violent Jay of the ICP, um, mm-hmm. and it, it's definitely that one of those like that guy's having trouble walking around, kind of weight, you know. Like you can yeah. tell, so which sucks, you know. But even beyond that, they delivered a really good show, uh, musically at least. And uh, I don't know, it, it it it's weird having a show that late because like the one guy next to me that that I, I BS with the whole and caught up with the weekend that from way back in the day, back we do some sites together. We went to school together, uh, in college, and uh, he kept those off. You know, it's just like, what's well, one in the morning? <laughs> it starts at one in the morning, you know, and you're it's gotta there. be it's gotta be it's gotta be difficult all around. For yeah, both hands and talent. It's like the it, it's oh yeah, it, it's gotta be the best thing. And like the, when we went to lady the ladies' night, it felt so awkward because like people were having trouble getting into it because like I think I could tell like the Kevin Gill as the announcer was tired and 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 the crowd was a little tired and it was just like, well, I don't know how this works. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so I don't know. Either way, it was fun. It was a good time. It was all part of the package, of course. So 
I can't really get bad about one night being like a little off or something like that. Um, and really, I can't say you should go just for the wrestling. Certainly not. Um, the experience on top of that, because if you went just for the wrestling, you'll be very disappointed. Very surprised to read there's so actually some decent reviews about the wrestling they do. Commentary is hilarious. It's very themed in what they do. Um, mm-hmm. When you when you watch back at some of them, I forget. Had you watched a JCW event yet? Uh, I don't believe I watched a full event, but I have seen clips of okay. uh, certain stuff from yeah, okay. from we, like, we, especially I, like the commentary stuff. I'm making a note to kick you over some stuff, some of the classic stuff, so you can exactly see where this is coming from. Um, I think you might find that a little funny. I don't know how you do, how you deal with blood over there. I, I, I can handle some blood. I, 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 okay, I can, I, okay. I can just be like, hey, little... this is history, man. This is history. <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll make sure you're educated in the JCW. Maybe this will be an ongoing conversation. And I hope they do more stuff. Like, I, I mean, obviously, they do one big thing every year. Um, but they're, I was actually surprised to see some. Dave Prezak actually promoted, or um, mm. uh, not promoted, but, uh, uh, you know, was sort of very, hyped. very involved in the writing for, for this. And Brian Gorey, who, oh, okay. Brian Gorey, who's currently a Ring of Honor referee. Uh, yeah. was involved as well so and also on the finding zach allen uh 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 dvd so i don't it was fun gathering cholos i think if they were back in ohio certainly if they're on the same grounds i love the grounds they were at i want to go check it out check it out again and i'm going to keep an eye out if they do any other shows i pay-per-views anything like that and try to keep updated on it um speaking of i don't know where i was speaking of but uh can i can i <laughs> can i gloat a little bit Yes, absolutely. Because uh, if you go to Bye. the latest F- issue of Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and on page six of What's Before the Bell, how is a review for Finding Zach Gowan? What? And that's uh, it does look a little weird when you're not looking at it. Somebody's asking me, what are these things down here? I was like, well, sir, that is four out of five suplexes that the DVD Hell got. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. So a little, little kind of self. I'm in print, baby. This is when I get to prove myself to my parents that I'm doing real stuff because it's in paper form. That's when three amigos. Make, with, that's when three it matters. amigos and Eddie Guerrero give you one extra. That, that's what that uh, uh, magazine says. What does that do? I, I, I'm trying to make a, a reference about the four suplexes, and it, it got jambled in my brain. But it, clearly, that, I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome for you know. You get that that's out right. there. Look at that. Look at that right there. Fill up on sorgatronmedia.com slash store in uh, digital download form you need to get the dvd at zach right there but no it's the and also 35th anniversary issue holy crap yeah uh, so and, yeah, and, and it's so weird I, I i can't remember the last time i've looked through a pro wrestling illustrated you know i i never i never really frequented them like i have a i, I have a stack of them from back in the day right uh and the issue is they stopped selling them at stores at least from where i'm at Really? They stopped, yeah, they stopped selling them in stores, basically, which upsets me greatly. Like, yeah, I, I had to go. I knew my grocery store carried them uh, because they still had like the decent sized rack. <laughs> um, hey, oh, hey, but it's also interesting to look through here and be like, I know that guy, mm-hmm. you know, I, yeah, it, like, like was, I, I know we like do that on YouTube all the time with like, especially with the circles that we work in. But like you know, going here like like uh, two pages later on nine is actually six. You know, got featured in here. Somebody, oh, okay. somebody that was at Super Indy in the Last Chance uh, Four Way uh, 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 saw him at. Uh, he was actually a fill in match with somebody at uh, Road to Super Indy, I believe, uh, previously. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's 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 a cool dude. Talk to him a little bit. Uh, we should have him on the show sometime. Actually, if I if I see him come through to IWC again, we'll talk to him. Uh, absolutely so but definitely uh wanted to check out ashley six that's with two x's he's on the twitters he already favorited us once tonight so uh we'll throw another shout out there try and get through <laughs> a show without meshing generation dead that's my new challenge and that's not this hey. week <laughs> other findings I'm, I'm walking through the the gathering there's all kinds of there's people as i love there's always people selling shit like not just like the the vendors like there's people mm-hmm. in campgrounds. It's like a flea market, okay? Because they have the tents, <laughs> and they're like, maybe they're selling shit, you know? Hey, here's an old ICP shirt, twenty dollars, or give me head, you know? Was one of them. So you get the <laughs> idea of the kind of barter system that's happening here. But I, I pass one <laughs> to cardboard, so everybody writes their shit on cardboard out there, and then are usually beer boxes. Um, and here was one that didn't involve drugs. 
uh, free wrestling DVDs. Nice. And as you see, they're very lucha centric, right? I have not watched these yet, but I had a wonderful con- conversation with the fellow that I can't remember his name right now. I'm sure I'll catch with with him eventually. Um, he actually knows the guy uh, that does the squared circle wrestling, squared circle mm-hmm. review that we talked about a shot last uh, a year ago uh, with Zach Gowan as Pogo the Wonder Boy. We had a great discussion about that on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem show uh, a while back. Uh, this is uh revolucha i think is the company i don't know it's not very clear to me <laughs> it's actually not revolucha cinco de mayo 2008 it's actually a two-day thing uh and the oh god uh, okay you ready for all this uh, blah I'm blah prepared. blah productions and the independent wrestling revolution present revolution and mascarada. Come on, you're close to a Mexican border. Yeah, yeah, right? that's okay. pretty good. That's pretty good. And mascarada. Actually, 2005 at the Majestic Theater, which I believe is a very historic place. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of names I don't know on here. And he said he's just kind of getting rid of these and getting the word out there because he actually are, did finish a recent event that they're putting out on DVD and digital and all that. Um, and, and again, and had a good discussion. Nobody's buying DVDs. Doesn't happen anymore. I, I know. Mm-hmm. I'm holy crap. I'm getting most of my sales from digitals. I know that. Uh, Sorgershawmedia.com slash store. Um, <laughs> so, Lucha event. Yeah, I'm going through the... Okay, Lin Dorado. I know him from Super Indie one year uh, in, in the recent years. Uh, Bumpin' Uglies. Mini Charlie Manson. What? Uh, okay. Ophidian. Okay, we know that name. No, um, I definitely know do, 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 do. Uh, Zach Gowan. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Um, do, 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 do. Chris Sabin. I didn't even see that before. Uh, <laughs> Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Who's that guy? <laughs> I hope no he's clue. in like a USA mask. Yes. <laughs> that would be amazing. La Park is on this. I, I can't wait to watch it. I hope I hope I can get a report from from, from these. Uh so there you go. That's uh everything I have, I think. A lot of wrestling. A lot of everything. A lot of wrestling. I'm on sensory overload. I've been I've been I've been trying to taper off here. The last few days uh, from this, and uh, it's been a blast. So that's my wrestling experience for this week. Very cool, sir. You got anything awesome coming stuff. up you want to talk about? Uh, coming up, um, there's actually a whole lot of new wrestling events that are uh, coming up this weekend. Uh, I'll, I guess, I'll touch on a few things that we didn't get to mention. Uh, I'll talk with Biss because Inspire Pro Wrestling is going to turning back was this past Sunday. Uh, really, really awesome show. Uh, it was a big learning experience for me. I got to le- work with a lot of different people uh, who gave me a lot of really good tips. Uh, so I was, it was a pleasure to work that show. It was our second of our X Division events, uh, which was super fun. Barbie Hayden successfully defending her NWA World Women's Championship against Mia Yim, which was a phenomenal match. Uh, definitely one you should seek out. Uh, speaking of matches, you should seek out when these come out on DVD. Uh, soon through Smartmark Video, uh, a, a match that I feel stole the show and, and really was the personification, I think, what we want to do with our women's wrestling division was the match between Athena, who a lot of people may know, uh, a Shimmer wrestling star, has done so much you know, in, in women's wrestling uh, the past couple of years, taking on Kat Green, who's someone you may not have heard of because she uh, wrestles predominantly on uh, the McAllen, Texas area. Uh, she's been doing some stuff uh, in Inspire Pro and for the NWA. And this, I feel, was her coming out. She really, really impressed. Uh, and it was, it, you know, on a match of 11 matches uh, uh, with, you know, men's match, half of the match, matches being men's matches, uh, that match stole the show, And in my opinion. And they killed it. So if you are getting that DVD for one reason, it would be to check out that match. Uh, another reason would be to check out the much-anticipated matchup between front of the indie mayhem show Delilah Doom and Solo Darling, which could quite possibly go down as the cutest wrestling match I've ever seen live. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It almost, like, I don't think there should be a, we should have, like, a, a what is it, the smoke, the people put on uh, cigarettes, the general warning or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, Surgeon uh, General's warning. Surgeon General's warning. That needs to be on our DVDs now for the level of cuteness that is in that matchup. Because it is ridiculous and it will damage your health. Um, it is amazing. Uh, so yeah, and it was a lot. Of, there's a lot of breakout performances. It was awesome working with Mia Yim, mm-hmm. uh, Leva Bates, and Solo Darling. They did a uh, round uh, round trip 
32 hour uh, long drive to come to be on part of this show. Oh, wow. And that's amazing. Uh, driving from Florida. So those three are awesome and they were great to work with. Uh, and we would love to have them back in Inspire Pro. Uh, so yeah, that was really cool. Uh, our next event is August 31st, Relentless. Uh, we already know the main event for that show, which is going to be Ray Rowe, uh, who is the number one contender for the Inspire Pro Championship, taking on the champion, one man Mike Dell, which should be a fun match. One man Mike Dell, who, funny enough, Sorg, our Inspire Pro Champion, is going to be appearing on a little show uh, uh, this Sunday uh, on CMT. Uh, oh! That's, that's hosted by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, that get away! I saw that. It was on business page, right? Like I saw like yeah. a, a post about somebody on Broken Skull Ranch. I've actually seen the first ten minutes of the first episode. That's going to be a fun show. Yes, uh, we we definitely meant we definitely wanted to spread the word about Mike Dell being on that, and so did Stone Cold Steve Austin because Steve Austin tweeted our uh, Inspire Pro page, which is kind of nice. crazy and ridiculous. Um, that's that's kind of insane. Um, but yeah, Mike Dell is going to be on uh, this Sunday's episode, so uh, nice. definitely go check that out. Uh, it's on uh, CMT Sunday, I believe it's eight Eastern, seven Central. I may be wrong. Uh, go to CMT's website, check in, and find out more. For sure, for sure. Hey, I'll hey. oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Oh, uh, one I, I almost forgot about. Uh, friend, our friends at Vicious Outcast Wrestling having a show this weekend, and you can see it apparently on stageit.com slash vow. So they're getting into uh, that whole deal. Uh, uh, so, th- so there you go. You don't have to be here in Connellsville, PA, which is a good distance out from Pittsburgh, of course. Uh, it's August onslaught. You're loving those alliterations, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, the, if you like Chikara, Tim Donst is going to be there. Uh, the Assyrian p- portal taking on, of course, our friends Generation Dead. I did not get out of the sh- this show without saying that. Uh, Facade's going to be there, another friend of the show. Uh, Jimmy Nuts, of course. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, oh, wait, who's this one? Mandy, Mandy Leon, who's made appearances lately with um, uh, the Adam Rose crew, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, uh, Ring of Honors, uh, Future of Honor. That's uh, right. A couple shows that's she's right. Done, so they- uh, Matt Tremont, uh, that we've talked to recently, uh, at the running an anarchy and a an- double anarchy title match. It's like a tag team anarchy match i guess uh Interesting. So, uh shane strickland against tim Dons, of course um uh, it looks like a great show it looks it looks awesome uh if you're in the area please check it out vicious outcast wrestling.com or find them on facebook actually i think a lot more activity there and they actually have lineups uh you know just a reminder they're actually going to have balls mahoney and sabu this is not a touch screen uh balls <laughs> sabu uh september 6th coming up and they already have a poster up for who's going to be around for October Onslaught 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, again, Infidia Portal, Chance Prophet, uh, David Starr, which sounds familiar, Matt Tremont, Jimmy Nuts, and a lot of the ladies. A lot of the ladies. It's like half ladies on this on this list here, um, including Heidi Lovelace, who we were talk- just talking about, uh, Mandy Leon, and a bunch of other ones. So go check that out. It's with our friends at VOW. Awesome. Awesome stuff. All righty. Uh, so is that it? Is that all the indie that's wrestling all, there is to have? That's all I have, Sorry, John. Uh, but like we say, like we say every week, if you're out there, if you see indie wrestling, go support it. Definitely go these support guys, it. These guys deserve your love and your money and 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 your cheers and your booze and mm-hmm. and and any chance you can get to see it and support it, please do. And like I said, please support also uh, some of our stuff around here. Uh, Boss battle. Uh, this week, uh, going up on insertcointobegin.com, our uh, Evangelistico, you you may remember from this show before, he loved video games so much when we talked to him. He was always tweeting. I was like, hey, let's let's have him on and talk video games with the guys. Uh, it was a blast. Um, he It was it was interesting. It was very interesting. <laughs> cool to get some <laughs> different opinions in on that show and, and cross that over. Um, and, of course, uh, support the com. There's a Patreon on there for the main show if you're digging on that to help support that and help make this bigger. Maybe we'll spin another Indie Mayhem show out. You never know, right? Um, and, of course, uh, thanks to Basic Sickness for that theme, theme song at the beginning and end of the show. BasicSickness.com to support him. Live.SorgatronMedia.com every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. And earlier, if you want to check out some of the other shows, we're on Facebook, Google+, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, Group 
on Facebook is a great place to be. Uh, we're at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com four one two two zero six WMN zero. And uh, hey guys, go support some. Oh.